So the Beatles and artificial intelligence. It's a bit of a hot button issue at the moment. There's a few things kind of going on that's being discussed in the news. And I thought I'd make this video today to kind of clarify what's been said, what's happening in the future, and where we're at with artificial intelligence and the music of the Beatles. The incident that I think really sparked all this talk happened recently when the subject of AI came up in a BBC Radio 4 interview with Paul McCartney, who announced somewhat incidentally that with the help of artificial intelligence, there will be a new Beatles song coming out later this year, also referred to as the band's final song. Perhaps we're finally getting Carnival of Light, but I'm sure most of us Beatles fans assume it's the long awaited now and then. Now, before I get into the AI of it all, allow me to explain the origins of this rumored final song. When Paul, George and Ringo got together to create the Beatles anthology in the mid nineties, they had originally planned for each volume to begin with a new Beatles song. These three songs would be derived from three homemade tape recorded demos of John Lennon singing and playing piano in the late seventies in his Dakota apartment. These tapes were then handed to the three remaining Beatles from Yoko Ono for the anthology project. Assisted by producer Jeff Lynne, the Threetles, as they were known at that point, built the songs up with guitar, drums, and bass, which resulted in Free as a Bird on volume one and Real Love on volume two. Free as a Bird was their preferred number as they really felt like they were creating the song organically. What we actually did was remake this song I mean, even with chords and stuff, we changed chords. When George and I were doing the harmonies, and that was what Ringo said when we got back in the control, it just sounds just like the Beatles. You know? Whereas Real Love, with its complete set of lyrics, felt like they were acting as more of a backing band to John's more fleshed out demo. Well, Real Love's poppy it was more difficult, actually, because we'd already done it. For me, I felt it was more difficult to, to turn it into a real Beatle track. The thing for me that was not quite as much fun was it was finished. It had all the words and the music. I didn't really get to input. This was like more like we were sidemen to John. Now there was supposed to be one more song, often referred to as Now and Then, but George Harrison wasn't a fan of it. But there were three that we liked. Free as a Bird, Real Love, and there was another one that we started working on, but George went off it. <sighs> Fuck it out. Fucking rubbish, this is. It was like, no, George, this is John. It's still fucking rubbish, you know. Oh, okay then. <laughs> so that one, that one's still lingering around somewhere. I'm gonna nick in with Jeff and do it, finish it one of these days. So ever since this 2012 Jeff Lynne documentary, we have known that Paul McCartney has had every intention of finishing this song and releasing it. It was just a matter of when. But what we don't know from this is if George thought it was fucking rubbish because he just didn't like the song or because the audio quality was too poor to make anything good of it. The audio quality had really been an issue. particularly with the song Real Love, where there was a 60 cycle mains hum throughout the entire recording. And also due to the low volume that John Lennon recorded it at, there was a persistent and significant hiss that Jeff Lynne just did the best he could to minimize. My hope is that George vetoed now and then due to the audio quality and not because he's straight up disliked the song because we don't want this new endeavor to be perceived as Paul going behind George's back. Additionally, there is this clip of George in 1997 talking about the anthology recordings where he says, I think he would like it. In fact, I said to them, I, I hope somebody does this to all my crap demos when I'm dead. Make them into hit songs. So yeah, from that, I just don't think he'd mind. Versions of Now and Then have been circulating through bootleggers and on the internet for years, but every version I've heard has left a lot to the imagination. And now with cutting edge technology that didn't exist in the 90s or even 10 years ago, those audio concerns that George had with Now and Then can be alleviated with a little help from Peter Jackson. When tasked with putting together The Beatles Get Back, the three-part documentary series about the band working on their new album and eventual rooftop performance, Peter Jackson knew he needed groundbreaking technology to be able to clean up the shoddy audio. Jackson put to work his engineers at his production company, Wingnut Studios, who developed their own machine learning or demixing software capable of splitting up sounds that were baked into the one recording. This same technology was then utilized by Giles Martin when he worked on the 2022 special edition of the Beatles Revolver, which had originally only been recorded on four track tape in 1966, and now has full dynamic range with an excellent stereo mix in Dolby Atmos. This brings us to Paul's statement about AI being used in this new Beatles song. In this interview, McCartney spoke about how people had been coming up to him, telling him how they'd heard a version of Paul's song with John's vocals. But people will say to me, oh yeah, there's a, there's a track where John's singing 
one of my songs. And it isn't, it's just AI, you know. And right after mentions how they used, quote, that kind of thing in the Beatles Get Back. And we were able to use that kind of thing when we did, when um, Peter Jackson did the film Get Back. So what he's done here is thrown in two very different technologies into the one thought and people have been freaking the fuck out about it. Offended that it's been called a Beatles song. Taking this and making a, a new song out of it using elements that weren't part of the original plan but to call it a Beatles song. It's a bit of a stretch and, and a bit of an insult. Many people, I think in bad faith, have interpreted Paul's words to mean that he's using AI to synthetically create artificial singing from John and perhaps George as well for this new Beatles track, but of course that's not what's happening. He was merely explaining that the machine learning capabilities to, for example, remove piano from the vocals or to remove tapis that was used in Get Back has also been applied to this new song. The poor guy even had to send out a tweet clarifying the situation. Like, Come on, I cannot believe it's come to this. While we're on the topic of these fake AI songs, where for example, someone's made a young Paul McCartney singing an old McCartney song like New from 2013, or they get John Lennon singing Yesterday, or George Harrison singing freaking Oasis, which like, great, are you happy? You're making George sing a song from a band that he hated with a passion. I don't know if he hated them with a passion, but he did not like Oasis. You know, I mean, he's just excess baggage, I think. And all he does is, you know, make people think what a bunch of prannies they are. Okay, so the first time I heard a couple of these, I thought they were cute, you know, some were more convincing than others, but the more I've sat with it and the more these versions get passed around, I've really grown to dislike them. There's a few reasons why I've got a problem with it. Obviously there's the ghoulish issue with using the voice of a dead person to make them say or sing something that they've never recorded. And look, I know right now it's pretty easy to tell what's real and what's fake, but in five years, I think it's gonna be way more difficult to discern reality from the artifice, and that scares me. Like, I get the technology is amazing, and it, like there's, there is an exciting element, but, uh, I mean, McCartney even said the same thing. All of that is, is kind of scary, um, but exciting because it's, it's the future. Another issue that I have with these recordings, a bit harder to explain, but like the image of it in my head just doesn't sit well with me. I'm not saying it gets me depressed or anything like that, but it's kind of like the music version of Weekend at Bernie's, like propping up a dead person and pretending they're alive for the entertainment of others. It's, it's just weird. But the key reason I do not like these AI recordings is because they sound like shit. I'm sorry if people are moved by these, but they just evoke nothing in me, especially at the quality they're at right now. One of my favorite things about listening to the Beatles music is to hear their unique voices singing in harmony. When it came to their singing, what the Beatles lacked in formal training, they made up for with evocative emotional expression and stunning resonance. They sung with a point of view. They told a story through the tonal quality of their voices. You felt the pain or the joy of the tune through their singing. With these AI songs, you hear none of the modesty in Ringo's voice or the anguish and bite in John's. You don't get any of the warmth of Paul's voice and none of the soul of George's. That's why I listen to the Beatles music and their solo work. That's why I love them as singers and none of these robotically synthetic versions come anywhere near the real thing. And I cannot believe people thought Paul McCartney would ever do that to his fans. So my hope with what I believe will be the song now and then is that it uses all four Beatles at least somewhere in the recording. It's safe to assume Paul's providing backup vocals and bass, Ringo on drums as usual, and of course we'll have John Lennon's vocals and possible piano. But I really hope George is on there somewhere. It is a Beatles song after all. I know they worked on it a little bit on Anthology before they scrapped it, so if there's you know, a guitar solo or just, just something from George Harrison, I'd be so happy with that. But I think we all shouldn't get our hopes up about this song, particularly after the mixed reviews of Free as a Bird in the 90s. It's got a hell of a lot to live up to, but I'm very excited about it. And hey, maybe while they're at it, they can use that demixing technology to clean up other anthology songs. I mean, I would just adore a remastered version of Real Love or pretty much anything off anthology. And as for the future of the Beatles and technology, well, I think between McCartney, Starr, Peter Jackson, Giles Martin, and the rest of the estates, they're all very aware of the magnitude of this legacy. And if they continue with how they've been handling all things Beatles as they have done for the last few years, I think we'll be in very good hands. 
And now it is over to you. What do you think of the Beatles and AI? Have you been digging these artificial intelligent songs that have been cropping up that I really don't seem to like? Maybe I'm missing something. Are you excited about now and then or are you remaining cautiously skeptical? Let me know in the comments below. Also, this was actually a bonus video from my Patreon page. Uh, if you like the tone and overall vibe of this video, there's a whole lot more just like this. I upload one every single month over on Patreon. It's only a few dollars a month. If you want to join, the link is in the description. Plus it would be support me, which I would genuinely very much appreciate. I will have more videos out very soon. Thanks for watching this one and I'll see you later. Bye.